Hi all. Uh, good afternoon to one and all uh, who's attending this workshop on FE. So uh, initially, thanks for your time uh, to attend this workshop. So I am Hari, uh, who is a senior simulation engineer who, uh, with more than seven years of uh, FE experience in uh, various domains like structural, thermal, uh, vibrational problems. So I think we can go to the content of this uh, <clears throat> workshop. So the main objective of this workshop is to uh, shed some light on uh, what FEA means and what are the recent trends in the industry, how we can get into this uh, domain and uh, what are the typical job roles and responsibilities across the industry. So I hope I'll give you some uh, good in, uh, industrial information uh, in the simulation perspective. So let's get started. So, so we'll go with the introduction part. So what is FEA? It's an abbreviation of finite element analysis. So what this finite element analysis as a breakup means. So what we all have is a problem in hand and we want FEA to be used. So when we think of this word FEA, what comes to our mind is the first one is the color plot. So how do we actually get this color plot? So the color plot actually is a representative of uh, various things that we are actually doing, right? So I will explain you uh, what it, it means. So initially we have a geometry. So this geometry is a physical representation of our problem. And we are uh, simplifying this geometry by removing some chamfers and uh, insignificant uh, 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 radius fillets. And we are converting this problem into a mathematical problem. So mathematical problem means uh, here our geometry is uh, split into more number of segments that is called elements. So these elements are made with infinite to finite. So in the real world, what we have is millions and millions number of atoms and molecules, but we cannot go with so many millions of elements here. So we have a finite number that is split into different number of elements where you are applying the partial differential equations and which is actually translated into algebraic equations. I'm sure you need not do all these things. Solver will take care of itself. What we have to do is that we have to pick the right type of analysis and what is the material property that the material or the part has. And we have to realistically fix the boundary conditions. And what is the load that is coming to that? Either it is a structural load or is it a thermal load? What it takes. So we are applying the material the loads, boundary conditions, and we are discretizing the model. So what a discretization here means is that we have split into different number of elements that is finite. So that's why the name is called finite element model. And this numerical solver, when we solve it, it takes care of all these partial differential equations and algebraic equations to give you a color plot. So this is what we want, right? So this color plot can be a different desired parameter like stress, displacement, and whatever it is. So temperature, it can give you the desired parameter. So you are saying that I have this temperature, I have this load on this place, and I want to know whether it will fail or not. Yes, this is how it works. I hope the flow chart was clear. So why we have to do an FEA is the question. Uh, in the early process, as you think uh, uh, you might be knowing, uh, design is actually translated into a prototype and they do the testing and the production is made. So here everything is back and forth. So they do a design. They don't know whether it is uh, it is meeting the objective. So they what they make is that they make a prototype. They will make a small prototype of that and they test it. If it fails, then again it goes to design. Then again the prototype is again made. Again the testing is made. Uh, this loop is like infinite, right? So um, what we can do to stop it from happening? So we need to, because time is money. 
we cannot put a lot of time because which is also affecting our cost as well. So what companies decided initially this concept was taken with aerospace industry where they utilized a CAD and they do an FEA. I will be explaining how uh, everything works. So what they did is a designer speaks with an FEA simulation engineer and they give this geometry, whatever process I explained in the previous slide, they discretize the model. That is, they have elements in the geometry, they apply these loads, boundary conditions, and they see what is the deflection that is coming to the part, what is the stress that is coming to the part, what is the temperature that is coming to the part. So are we ready to lose a lot of material without doing FEA? Now every industry is actually investing a lot of money in R&D and especially a lot of money goes to simulation engineers because companies have realized that the value that they add to the R&D is quite heavy. So that's why they have, companies have started to invest and this is the basic difference between your traditional approach and the FEA driven approach. Now, actually in this current era, what is happening is that once they do CAD and FEA, it's actually directly taken to the production itself. They have the BOM, they have the drawing because already it is a proven technique and it's worthwhile. So here, uh, what I'm going to explain is that what are the different leading solution providers for our FEA? As you might be knowing, ANSYS uh, is a leading, one of the leading software supplier for FEA. And you also have Abacus, Comsol, and these are uh, one of the um, uh, few top leaders in the simulation industry. And again, all these are based upon the industry. If you take uh, automotive as a case, uh, you might be starting with HyperMesh, uh, which is a preprocessor. Preprocessor means it is essentially used for meshing this. But um, for a solver scenario, you have to learn LS Jaina. But um, when you go to other structural civil environments, ANSYS is quite uh, used uh, uh, preferably. One thing that uh, we can actually start is that ANSYS is quite user friendly. And uh, Abacus is also used in many of this uh, physics, structural, thermal, and Comsol is a uh, multi-physics. Uh, regarding the open uh, source FEA softwares, and you can actually get it for free which is like code aster and uh, you can also get this ansys student version for free from ansys uh, website uh, which has a limited uh, number of modules and uh, you cannot go more than uh, 30000 uh, number of elements which is quite a less number uh, for the complexity that we are actually involving so just try to try your hand you can actually download ansys workbench student version from their website which is quite free and you can test your basic structural uh, simulation knowledge so it takes hardware also to account to have these simulations right you must have a workstation which is not like your normal laptop you can also use your normal laptop for your simulations, but the runtime, uh, it is quite heavy. Uh, so we must have a workstation, uh, typically having four to 12 physical cores uh, on each GPU. So, and uh, a solid stripe drive is also preferable uh, uh, because that is quite faster, but the solid state drive costs actually more than double than your normal hard drive. And regarding the RAM capacity, it is quite recommended to have at least 16 GB of RAM where our usual uh, personal laptops have not more than four or eight, right? So anyways, uh, for a large number, of, uh, large number of degree of freedom where your number of elements are heavy and uh, the model is quite heavy regarding the contacts, you can actually go with 64 GB. So there are a lot of MNCs are actually utilizing minimum of 64 GB as your workstation. And uh, regarding the graphics card, uh, you, you must also have a good visibility or a visualization of your geometry, right? There you must have a minimum uh, a NVIDIA or a AMD good graphics card, which is quite essential for your uh, simulation because uh, simulation is also all, all about uh, the geometry and the colors, right? So it must be clear. You cannot use a very random uh, graphics card. 
and us uh, os wise you can actually use either uh, windows linux or unix so this ansys versions can support all these uh, uh, platforms so coming to uh, uh, the basic part of our fea so you must be having a question so you are saying fea so what are the different types of analysis that i can make so this gives you a glimpse of uh, uh, basic uh, types of analysis that you can do on this uh, FEA. So I assume that you might be aware of the difference between the actual stress strain curve um, and uh, linear material curve. So it is just nothing but when we uh, hear the term linear, we think of the term straight, right? So when we think of straight, mathematically what comes to our mind is y is equal to mx plus c so it is the same equation that is actually carried out in a linear static analysis where you are actually giving this line to this material curve actually your material curve is this like this but you are giving a slope like this and a linear curve so this slope is given by your Young's modulus so that is what sigma is equal to strain into Young's modulus means if you input Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio this curve is taken care of. and so if we give this uh, line and you have a geometry which is actually split into different number of elements and you have loads and you get a stress right now suppose your yield strength is 250 megapascal for your material and the stress that I'm getting as an output from my thing is 200 megapascal. So is my simulation valid now in a linear static analysis? What do you think the answer is? So my yield strength is 250 megapascal. The stress, maximum stress that I'm seeing from the part is 200 megapascal. It is valid. So the answer is, this this straight line actually deviates from your yield point so until the yield point whatever the stress that is seen in your fea solver is exactly right as your actual stress strain curve it starts to deviate after your yield point that's where you are starting to use nonlinear material analysis so when you say nonlinear there are three types of nonlinearity right so one is a material nonlinearity, one is a geometrical nonlinearity, one is a contact nonlinearity. So based upon whether your analysis needs the nonlinearity, based upon your geometry, based upon your, if you have a frictional contact, it is going to be a nonlinear analysis. It's not a, a, a linear analysis. When you have a bonded contact, bonded contact means just like a glued contact. So one part moves and the adjacent part also moves together. So that is a linear contact. So you can actually expect what is what. Nonlinear means it is highly unexpected of the assumption. So that is what a nonlinear means. So what is meant by dynamic analysis? So I will just uh, ask you a simple question. Uh, we have a, we are holding a, uh, glass of water in hand so we have it for one second two seconds ten seconds hundred seconds and after one hour so is all the stress values in your hand the same no right because after some time you start to feel that you are feeling it a heavy the same load is actually happening on top of your hand but still you are seeing that there is a strain in your hand. So where is the parameter called time coming into play? That's where your dynamic analysis gives. So this force is a function of time where you have mass into acceleration and damping coefficient into velocity and stiffness into displacement. So for a linear static analysis, we are taking care of only kx into f. So that is the only parameter. For dynamic analysis, we make sure these parameters are included. And uh, under this dynamic analysis only, your vibration problems actually come, where you're damping and what is the acceleration. So next is the buckling analysis. 
So are there scenarios that material can actually fail even without seeing the ill stress or your tensile stress? The answer is yes. So what actually happens is that the structure itself fails before the ill strength. So is the material the problem here? No, material itself is not the problem. If you have a long scale, if you compress it from the top, it can actually fluctuate. But you, if you keep it perpendicular and if you try to push it down, it will not because the stiffness is the resisting that bending. So you can actually see in uh, one of the buckling analysis that you can, you are uh, long columns, whether it will fail under buckling load or not. Or you can actually uh, reverse your uh, condition like on what conditions this will uh, fail so that you need to have a factor of safety in your analysis. So you, have, you can also do a thermal analysis. So why should we do a thermal analysis? So the answer to this question is, so not every operating environment for all these components is at room temperature, right? So we have materials at room temperature where it is actually heated to different. Now we are also started to sending rockets to moon also where the temperature is different. Here the temperature is different. So how do we know that what, how the materials will behave at the uh, higher temperature or a lower temperature, even cryogenic can also be made. Basic information what we need is, we need to cap capture the material properties for our high temperature as well as low temperatures. So fatigue analysis. So fatigue analysis, why should we do a fatigue analysis? So initially I have told that we can do a static analysis. Uh, we can do a dynamic analysis where time is also taken care. Then why should we do a fatigue analysis? So the answer is, you are actually considering repeated loadings here. So once it has happened, it hasn't failed. Twice it has happened, it hasn't failed. It is high, one, you can say that uh, the same example that I have taken, you are holding the same uh, water on top of your hand, but it is, you are seeing that you are still okay. But what will happen if you take it and drop it? If you take it and drop it, if you take it and drop it. So how many cycles this can withstand? Based on the number of cycles, 10 to the power of uh, five cycles, uh, it is classified between low cycle fatigue and high cycle fatigue. You have to input your uh, uh, SN curve to this uh, solver and it will tell you whether it will fail or not for the given number of cycles. Mm -hmm.